Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us at today's Powerhouse Working Mom Mindset Summit. We are so excited to dedicate the month of June to all working mothers and all women. Um, your jobs are harder now than they've ever been and we want you to know, Carrie and I, that we have your back. So we've created this one place that you guys can go to for mind, body, and professional support. And today we have uh, Lisa Brill uh, with us, joined from, she is a American Regional Managing Partner and the Head of Hospitality, Leisure, Gaming, uh, and Industry Group at uh, Sherman Sterling in their real estate practice. She is a mother of two and is definitely in the thick of it like the rest of us. She is an amazing leader uh, and I'm so excited to, uh, to have her today. And, and speaking with Lisa today, we have Carrie Barrett, who is the founder and owner of Carrie Barrett Consulting, which is a full service media training and communications firm. Uh, Carrie is an Emmy award-winning broadcast journalist with nearly 20 years of anchor and reporter and producer experience. And now she is with us. So I'm excited to have her interviewing all of our uh, expert speakers. And please make sure after this, you check out the agenda. There's lots of great stuff going on for the month of June. And with that, I will pass it over to, uh, to Lisa and Carrie. Thanks ladies for being here and for doing this. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, for, thank you for inviting me along for the ride, for the journey. It's exciting to be a part of this. And, and I get to speak with these amazing women like Lisa today and, of course, our participants as well. So thank you to our participants for being available also. I want to give them a quick reminder before Lisa and I start chatting that this conversation will last about 25-ish minutes. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. And if we have time, we should have at least a few minutes at the end to get to some of them. We'll go in chronological order. If we're not able to get to all of them, we'll try and connect with you offline to make sure that you get your questions answered. So without further ado, let's bring Lisa in. Lisa, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. No, for being great to here. be here. Thank you for having me. I oh really my gosh. appreciate it. Our pleasure. How, well, let me ask the obvious question. How are you holding up? <laughs> holding up okay. Obviously, as for everyone right now, some days are better than others, um, and it's day to day, but certainly having the nice weather helps. And, um, you know, it's been a, been a real learning experience, but, but doing well. Yeah. So, I mean, we're all, every day I feel like there's a new little, you know, just when I think that I have it under control, life throws me a little sucker punch to remind me that, eh, not, maybe not so much. Maybe there's a few things you still have to learn about this whole um, scenario that we find ourselves in. So what have you learned about yourself in the last, uh, how, what has it been, 10 weeks-ish that we've yeah. been under lockdown? Definitely. Um, so I don't um, work for a company that really encourages working from home. We do have a work from home policy, but it's never really been something that I've done long term um, yeah. for more than a day here or a day there when there's been a need. And obviously, when you work from home, your kids are generally at school, so you don't have that, that added distraction. Um, so certainly in the beginning, there was, a, there was a novelty to it, but as it progressed, I actually really began to appreciate how much I enjoy going to the office and the routine and the separation between the home life and the work life. Um, so it's definitely been an adjustment, figuring out how to do everything in one, in one space with different distractions than you have at the office, different commitments than you have at the office. Um, so it's definitely been, been a learning experience and um, definitely learned that I, I appreciate going to work. I appreciate, you know, putting myself together every day and, um, you know, having that experience in the office, interacting with people in the office. Um, and it's something that I look forward to getting back to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I hadn't realized how much I enjoyed that. What I, I enjoyed that what I was thinking was an excruciatingly long commute, but now I realized it was my time to decompress on the way home. You don't have that. You're jumping from the craziness of work right into the craziness of family and back and forth. It seems like all day long trying to bridge the divide between the two of them. And so the title of your talk today or what we're talking about is control what you can and manage the rest. And I think that's such a great um, observation because that's what we're all figuring out. Like, what is it that we can control and the stuff that is, you know, to some degree out of our control, because you're right, you can't, the routine is all different, right? How do you manage that? So in lieu of that or in light of that, how have you managed to find a routine like for you and your kids? 
Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, it's hit or miss. Some things work better than others. Um, you know, but for me, I've always been a person who, you know, has your routine, get up at a certain time in the morning, plan your day, plan your day around that. Um, so it's definitely been, been hit or miss. I mean, I've tried to do things like make sure I start work at a certain time in the morning. You know, if I'm breaking for lunch because I'm making the kids lunch, it's deliberate. I'm not going to schedule calls then if I can making sure I have time at the end of the day to take a walk or something like that. So trying to create a routine for me and for the kids. It's also really tough because my job is generally very dynamic. I mean, I'm a lawyer, so I'm working with my clients and doing my job. And, you know, I'm a real estate lawyer, so I'm negotiating transactions. Um, but I'm also co-managing part of America. So there's the management side of my job. Um, and then there's also, because I'm a lawyer and we actually have our own business, um, I'm do business development and you know work on trying to develop client relationships you know build a reputation for yourself in the market and things like that so i've had to figure out how to add and make sure that all those things are still part of my day i can't ignore the lawyer part of my job you know my clients are always a top priority as a lawyer i can't avoid the management side of my job and even though i'm at home and i'm not able to go and have lunches with people and and coffees with people and go to their offices and give a presentation and things that I would normally do as part of the business development side of my job. I've been working really hard at trying to build that into my routine so I don't lose sight of it. Because obviously for those of us who are in service professions, I mean, having clients is how we support ourselves. So it's just been really important to me to figure out, okay, I need to make sure that even though I can't go and speak on a panel at a conference as easily, I can do it through Zoom, or I can reach out to someone and say, listen, let's talk about you know, PPP loans and whether or not your business should apply for one, and let's incorporate that into a presentation or whatever, whatever it is. You know, how has this crisis affected the hospitality industry and what do you see people doing? So I'm trying to make sure that I incorporate that in as well and it becomes part of my new routine so I don't lose sight of any of those aspects of my professional responsibilities. So let me ask you this, and I, I know in my house, I've had to add a deadbolt to the very top of my office door to prevent yeah. children from wandering because they've learned how to jimmy the lock because they're inventive and creative and they want time with their mom. And you know, sometimes I have to close the blinds because they're outside running around and I'm on the first story. How have you managed to try and keep distraction like is there a way that you figured out to control distraction because just as much as our participants want to know your secret i do too <laughs> i don't think i have it i don't think i have a secret um i am really good at compartmentalizing normally <clears throat> and when i go to the office i am really not thinking about home because i have home all under control in terms of the assistance that i have at home in terms of the kids being at school when they're getting to their activities how a meal is getting on the table so normally I really don't have to think about those things. Yeah. And unfortunately here you do, right? You know, a child wanders in, I want a snack. Can I have a snack? I'm trying to get them to be more self-sufficient. Yep. And I'm also kind of going with the flow. You know, I've been on Zoom calls and conference calls where all of a sudden like a little head pops up <laughs> behind my chair. And I think that's happened to everyone right now. Yeah. And um, I'm just trying to go to go with the flow with it. I mean, I've certainly had to say to people on calls, like, listen, I'm going to have to put you on mute for a minute while I go make sure that my son gets on his Zoom class. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, that that's, you know, that's normal and everyone gets it and appreciates it right now. I do think, again, I'm trying to get the kids to be a little more self-sufficient. They're eight and 11 so that they're not always asking you for things that they could very easily do for themselves. So having mom home is a total novelty. So I think they also <laughs> like asking me to do things for them. But, um, you know, certainly I'm kind of going with the flow of that. I mean, some days are, are better than others. Some days they're needier than other days. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have doors that I can bolt very easily. Um, <laughs> otherwise, maybe I'd do that. Instead, I'm just, I'm just going with the flow. I try to set ground rules and expectations. And a lot of the times they listen. And then sometimes the head pops up behind the chair. Right, right. Sometimes it's my husband's head that pops up behind the chair. Like, can you find something too. for me? <laughs> I'm like, I don't, you've lived here the same amount of time I have. You know where it is. But sometimes they don't. Um, so let me ask you this. And I, I kind of want to when we were talking before the call, we talked about, you know, we touched on how you try and look at this in a more 
holistic way, meaning you try and give yourself a little bit of grace, right? Sometimes this is going to take priority. Sometimes that is going to take priority. But rather than looking at each individual thing as a success or a failure, you look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Can you, how do you do that? <laughs> You know, it's interesting. So many, um, many years ago, um, one of my partners gave great advice. I think I was still an associate at the time, and we used to have this program, which we still still do sometimes, um, which is a spotlight on, on women partners. And she said something that really resonated with me, which is like, listen, sometimes the client's going to win. Sometimes the family's not going to win. Sometimes the client's going to take the back seat and the family's going to take the front seat. And it's a constant balance. It's really constant balance. And um, you know, it's going to be different by week, it's going to be different by day, by hour, and you just have to get comfortable with the fact that, like, you can't do two things at once, and if you are a working mom, or it doesn't even have to be a working mom, just having, you know, a personal life and a professional life, um, you're going to have competing interests. You know, you could have an elderly parent who's ill, and you need to spend time and attention to them, and so for however long your work might not take the front seat. So, I've always been very comfortable with that, and I always thought that was great advice. And once I got myself in that mindset, that like I can't be everything for everyone at once. Like right. I'm going to have to make sacrifices. And for me, you know, being a partner at a law firm, oftentimes it is my job that has to take precedent because it is demanding, and that's what I need to do in order to do my job, meet my professional responsibilities, and also support my family. Um, so I just try really hard. I have for years just recognize that like some days are going to be better than others. And some yeah. days, um, you know, things are going to go the way you expect. Other days, they won't. And, you know, I talk to my kids about it as well. You know, I have really honest conversations with them about what I do and when I can be there for them and when I need to be there for work. And I also try to get them to tell me what's really important to them. Like, I can't be there for everything. I yeah. can't be there for every game you want to play. I can't participate in everything. So you really need to talk to me about what is really important that I need to do. So the same thing goes now, um, you know, some days things go really well. And then other days, you know, the kids are done with schoolwork by noon and they're running around and I have to find something to occupy them with, which takes time away from work and I'll just have to figure it out. Um, and some days are always going to be easier than others. Yeah, that's such a good point. I mean, I think... How does mindset play into that? Because that is something that's been... I mean, it's been tough across the board and it's been tough for, for me too, figuring out, okay, not take it completely derailed by those or, or at least in a place that's not of a great mindset when you have those days. And we have more of them now probably than we ever did before because there are things that just, it's just, it's yeah. not the same. Things are out of our control, no matter how much structure and formula we put around everything. It's a different beast. So how does your mindset play into your ability to keep putting one foot after the other and accepting what you can control and figuring out how to manage what you can? It's a, I mean, it's a huge part of it. Um, obviously, the days when you're feeling overwhelmed are not going to be as enjoyable and, I mean, much more stressful than the days when you feel like you have control. Um, I've always been someone who, who mulls things around. Um, and I've always been someone who plays out scenarios in my head so that I can think about ways things, might, ways things that might happen. And that's one of the reasons why I like taking walks at the end of the day. I clear my mind conversations I want to have with people, issues that I'm negotiating on deals where I want to come to a certain outcome. Um, you know, I do that in the morning too. When I wake up, I've always taken a half an hour before the whole family wakes up, just come downstairs and have a cup of coffee, clear my head, think about what I need to accomplish during the day, go through my calendar, go through my schedule and kind of plan it out. And I got used to a long time ago because for those of you who are lawyers and those of you who aren't lawyers, like, fire drills happen, things like your day, you think it can go one way and then it veers off in a total different direct, totally different direction. But for me, in terms of mindset, the more that I can control and have time to think through the better, because then I thought about different scenarios. Like, okay, if I don't get to this today and I get to it tomorrow, is that going to work? Or, okay, this is the conclusion I want to come to here. Or, all right, I have this three hour chunk of time with the kids in the afternoon. What can I structure for them? So for me, that really helps with my mindset when I have taken the time to think through what the day is going to look like, what are the expectations, 
what am I supposed to accomplish today? How am I going to reason through these issues? Um, it, it really helps me. And there's no ton of stuff you can't control. There are fire drills, there's stuff you can't control, and you just have to get comfortable with that, in, right. in my experience. Um, but just knowing that I've thought through as much as I can really helps my mental, my mental game. Yeah. And one of the things that I think Nicole is going to be speaking about at her workshop at 1.30 is emotional agility. And I'm, sh and I know that's one of the things that you speak about when you, when you talk about mindset and how that affects, like, how do you, how does that play into everything for you? Yeah. I mean, I think that you just have to sort of, you, you have to, and again, I keep back to it. You just have to get comfortable with the fact that like, you don't know what you you can't always control the way things are going to go and so to a little bit you you have to go with the flow and you have to get comfortable with that and um you have to sort of think like okay this this isn't what i was expecting um i'm a little upset right now i'm a little frustrated right now and aggravated right now like what tools do i have in my tool chest to be able to say okay let me get to a different place let me back up let me take five minutes away from this or wow there was something else i was going to do let me push that aside so I can focus on this. And I think that there just needs to be a, a, a flexibility in, in how you approach things. And honestly, listen, some days are better than others, right? Yeah. Some, some days they really are. Like this past Friday, I thought things were going one direction in my day. Then at the end of the day, I got a call from a client, you know, presenting a new issue to me. Something didn't go as we had thought in a negotiation and we had to replan everything. Um, and you just have to take a step back. You have to say, okay, you know, I now need to, sort of go forward in this direction. I need to go with the flow of this. I have to put aside other things um, and just you know, be more be more flexible. Um, and it, it's hard, especially when you're used to controlling everything. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I think, it, you know, it used to be, okay, we didn't, so, so let's say we got a call, you know, four months ago from a client at five o'clock on a Friday. If push came to shove, we could go into the office on a Saturday or Sunday and knock things out and really focus and try and, address the problem as quickly as possible. That's not an option right now. So have you had to calibrate those kinds of, I mean, I'm sure you have, how have you calibrated the expectations of yourself during this time versus where they were three or four months ago? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've always been someone who's worked on the weekends. It's just the nature of my job. So that's always been part of it in terms of the expectations when you're a lawyer and being there and available to your clients, nothing has changed. I think back when this first started, people were calling 24 hours a day because we knew everyone knew that you were home. That's, that has changed a little bit. But I think that one thing that has been very interesting is the issues have changed, right? Like, you know, right now, What's happening in this crisis is in some ways similar and in a lot of ways very, very different from what happened in the financial crisis. And people are dealing with very, very difficult issues for their businesses, in terms of their employees, in terms of, you know, what, how are they going to view their business going forward? And real estate is obviously very affected. Um, you know, and as a law firm, in terms of our business, we really want to be agile and responsive to what's going on. So right now, um, you know, one of the things that's different is you really have to be thinking about things differently and thinking about things very broadly and make sure that you are, because these are new issues for everyone, thinking sort of holistically. So that's definitely been something that's different, where normally I know the issues, they come up, they're pretty routine, like it's the same issues, but now they're new issues. And so being able to take a step back and say, okay, listen, I know you want a response right away. Um, I want to give you a response as quickly as possible. But I also want to think about this a little bit. There are new laws that are being, you know, being um, uh, published all the time. I want to, you know, I want to think about the impact on, you know, the fact that you can't evict your tenants or the fact that you can't foreclose on a loan right now. And it's different in each of the 50 states and we need to take the time to analyze it. So just saying to people, you know, I can't give you an answer right this second, but I'm going to give you an answer as quickly as I can. And I want to be really deliberate and thoughtful about this because things are different. Um, and that's certainly been challenging because as lawyers, we, we expect that we can just want to answer like that. And right now, um, there's a whole new landscape that we have to navigate. Have people been receptive? Do you feel like, I feel like people have, and businesses have started to be a little more graceful or 
offer grace when it comes to those kinds of situations because we're all in it. People are more receptive. Yeah, I, I used to expect a response, you know, within 12 hours. Now I understand if it's going to take, you know, 24 or 48. I mean, have you have you had to change your messaging around that too, or people are? Yeah, so I don't think I've, I don't. I, 48 hours is never going to work. Um, no, you know, I think it's just I think people want to come to the right answer, and so they definitely understand that you want to you know, talk to some other people and you want to take a little bit of time to think about it and stuff like that. Um, certainly as a lawyer, turnaround time is always going to be, always going to be very quick. Yeah. Um, but I will say the other difference is, you know, people are definitely right now also much more understanding of what's going on in the background, right? So, you know, people are asking, how are you? What's going on? How are you, how are you, do, you know, how are you doing? How has what's going on in the world affected you right now? And I think that's really meaningful. I think that it is definitely changing how we interact with people. I think there are personal connections that people are making. You know, we're all in this together. We all want to get through this together. We want to make sure that people are healthy and their families are healthy. And we understand that people are being affected by this personally. So I've definitely noticed a lot more personal connecting um, and people being understanding that, like, you know, you might have other stuff going on right now. Um, so certainly in terms of how quickly you're responding to things, um, you know, there still is an expectation that it's going to be swiftly, but also an understanding that we're all very human right now. Everyone's very human. And I definitely sense that in the conversations I'm having. And I'm asking more personal questions of people like, how are you? How are your children? How's your family? I know you have an elderly parent. How's your elderly parent doing? And people I feel are really receptive to that. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I had a question I was going to ask you, but Lindsay Pollack, one of our attendees, has a question that, that fits in well with what mm -hmm. we're talking about. So I'm going to go with that first. Yep. She would like to ask you about the nuances of business development right now. She says people are resisting to selling, which they are, but networking is always taking place. So can you talk a little bit about the nuances and how things have changed with, with BizDev? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, right, right now, um, you know, staying in front of people is key. Yeah. And where you might have said to someone like, hey, where am I getting a deal? Am I getting hired? you know, not necessarily where you want to be pushing this, certainly letting people know that you have certain skill sets and that you can help is important. Um, but I think finding that balance is, is key. But I think staying in front of people, reaching out to people in, in terms of your connections, someone who you ordinarily would say, hey, let's grab a coffee, say, you know, can we catch up over Zoom? Yeah. Your time for a phone call. Hey, here's an article that I thought you might find interesting. I do that all the time. I'm constantly sending people things like, you might have seen this, but staying in touch. And then I think figuring out how you could be of assistance to someone, because I do think business development is important. And, you know, we are all part of businesses and we all need to sustain those businesses. And, um, you know, I am a, a big proponent of, you know, offering up, this is how I can help you, yeah. how I can be accretive to your business, how I can be value add to your business. You know, if you ever want to have a conversation about that and try not to do it in, in a pushy way and you might not be as you know upfront about it as you would ordinarily but i do think if you don't stay in touch with people and if you don't let people know what you what you can offer somebody else somebody else will so it is a balance and i definitely appreciate that question from lindsay um but i think that you know for me i've been trying to really just stay in front of people yeah that's key. And thank goodness we have the, the technology that we do. Oh we had this happened, you know, seven years ago or even five years ago, we'd be in a much different, much different place. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So let me ask you this. And we, this was another topic that we were talking about a little bit before the call and we were saying, you know, but so we were each talking about the fact that it's been a while since we've had anybody look at our hair closely and all that other good stuff. And I know we're not the only women who are talking about that, but, but it's more than just aesthetics. And, and one of the reasons that it's important is because as professional women, all of that is part of our identity. We're very deliberate with the way that we present ourselves. And it's kind of like the armor that we put on. Those were your words. And I think they're yeah. very appropriate. And when we don't have all of that, it can affect your identity yeah. and how you interact and the things that you feel like you can control. How, how have you managed to navigate all of that? And you look fabulous, by the way. 
<laughs> I did it for all of you. I got you put on makeup. No, it's actually, it's been really challenging. And Nicole and I have spoken about this as well over the years, which is a, appearance, is, appearance can be important, right? Because it's how you're presenting yourself to the world, how you want someone to perceive you. And for me, you know, I go into the office every day. I put on a suit every day. I put on my makeup every day. And I have a certain you know, appearance that I'm trying to project. And it makes me feel good about myself. It's definitely linked to my identity. And sort of sitting at home in my workout clothes and washing my hair like every couple of days and whatever it is, you know, <laughs> you start to, I see cracks in the armor, right? I am not feeling like I am projecting what I want to project. Now, there's no reason for me sitting in my kitchen to necessarily project that. But I do think that, you know, it has been, I've been thinking about a lot identity and how it's really important to make sure that you don't lose sight of your identity during this. Um, and, to, and to do those things, like, you know, if I have a Zoom call, okay, well, if I'm gonna get on Zoom in front of people, like, I'm gonna make sure that I'm still projecting what it is that I want to project. And it's very personal. It's very, very personal. And, um, you know, I kind of laugh about like, oh, I wish I could do my hair. I wish I could go get a manicure or whatever it is. But it's because it and oftentimes makes me feel better at myself. Like I'm projecting the image that I want to project. And so I think that has been a very challenging piece of this, all this for, for men and women, I'm sure, which is that, um, you know, we have a different identity when we're just sitting at home and we yeah. aren't able to, you know, be outward facing in the world. Although I, I, I don't think I've come across a single man who hasn't taken the opportunity to grow a beard during this past time. Oh, week. Yeah. Yeah, some of the beards are very <laughs> impressive. And when we have our, our Zoom calls among, among partners, I'm, I'm very impressed with some of the beards. It's a whole different scenario for them. <laughs> um, Robin commented in the, in the chat, she said at least twice a week she wears a dress instead of a workout clothes just to try and feel human. And I think that's important. It, it, I feel like a different person. And I... I sometimes oh, yeah. feel a little bit, um, you know, superficial feeling that way, but I realize it does make a difference in the way that, that we present and it's the whole oh, yeah. image and everything else. Um, so let me ask you this. Are there, if you had to leave, and I, it's already 128, so we have to wrap up, but if there were three tips, tricks, strategies, whatever it was that you would want the attendees to walk away with in terms of, control, emotional agility, acceptance of what the day is to bring, what would those, what would you like to leave our attendees with? <clears throat> I, I think routine, as we talked about before, to me, um, is, is, very, is very important. And when I speak to my friends and my colleagues, um, sort of that is one thing that people <clears throat> have been struggling with is when I have, you know, the kids' schedules that I'm dealing with and my schedule that I'm dealing with and meals to get on the table and laundry to do and all this other stuff that ordinarily you might have managed in a different way, um, you know, pre-COVID um, pre crisis. Um, I think establishing routine. I think taking control of what you can. As I said, for me, um, the biggest piece of it is the, is the business development side of what I do and trying to figure out how to navigate that and think about that has been really important for me. And as I started to get more control over that piece of what I'm doing, um, I, felt, I have felt better. Um, and then, you know, the last piece of it is, um, you know, not to like my kids just, even though they were told not to come in here and um, I have them share across the door, all of a sudden they're in here and oh well. <laughs> and I think just going, going with the flow and being able to not let things upset you that, you know, ordinarily, like I early on in the crisis would, you know, get very aggravated about stuff. And now I'm like, you know, what? it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, when I had, when I had to, couldn't bring people in to clean anymore. I'm like, I'm just going to have to get used to the fact that the dust bunnies, there's a good chance that they could mutiny and revolt against anybody that lives in the house and probably win. Like, <laughs> But I'm just going to have to accept that. <laughs> well, I think the mountain of laundry overwhelmed me the other day to the extent where I didn't know it was possible to it's, have that much laundry. No, then I just got to fold with a glass of wine. That's the only way you can get through it all. I hear you, a glass of wine and some good music. <laughs> there you go. Lisa, it was so good to talk to you. Good to talk to you too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Um,
It was a pleasure to have you. I, I learned a lot from you. I know that our attendees learned a lot from you. So we appreciate your time. With that, because we are just about out of time, I'm going to mention two quick things. Number one, for those of you who are um, attending, all of the money, if you chose to make a donation, all of that money goes to support women that have been specifically, many of them affected by COVID and their families. Many of them are experiencing homelessness or on the brink of homelessness. So if you are able to make a donation, that goes specifically toward putting a roof over their heads and putting food perhaps on the table for them and their children. We've highlighted some of the women that we are helping through the nonprofit that we are partnering with. And that nonprofit's website is projectkind123.org. I would ask you to check it out if you have not already. They do amazing work. And then um, Nicole Michelson's uh, workshop is up next. If you have not already received the invite in your inbox, it should have come in during this past half hour. So go ahead and click on it and you can join. So we're that. actually going to, we're just going to stay here. Carrie, go right today. on to it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go right on to it today. Well then, then take it away. <laughs>